you can just quickly stalk them on Google Maps. And I mean, it is public information to be fair. Hey guys, it's here. welcome to the video. Today I will be talking about an important part of running an Etsy business, which is interacting with customers and sharing what I do in certain situations. This was a uh, requested topic. So these are like an outline of the topics we're gonna cover. And I'll just start off by saying that Etsy is a, a much more community focused e-commerce platform and customers tend to uh, sort of interact directly with sellers a lot more than in other places. So understanding how to uh, deal with them can help boost your sales and reviews. On average, I get like two customer messages every day, um, both from people looking to buy and people that have bought stuff already. I've had pretty decent reviews and feedback so far, so I'll be sharing some things that I've learned along the way that help me deal with customers to maintain my shop in good standing. Now, bear in mind, I'm not saying this is the only way to go about customer service or the single right way. It's just tips and tricks that have worked for me personally, and I'll be including examples of customer messages and uh, how I responded, or uh, in some cases, how I would ideally respond. But obviously don't use these as like, a blueprint example or assume they're the only right way to deal with the situation it's just how I tend to go about things okay so first of all a few things that might make your life easier um, do try to keep all conversations on Etsy that way they can intervene if there's any kind of dispute now if you weren't aware uh, the customer can actually see your email the email that you signed up with um, it's on the receipt so that's going to be this one here in your settings you can change it i've been contacted to my private email um, from customers just because maybe they thought it was the easiest way to reach me or they'd get a faster reply but if that happens make sure to just gently nudge them to uh, check their etsy messages it helps protect you if something goes wrong which hopefully it won't make sure you set up auto reply to say that you're gonna get to them soon uh, if you're expecting a lot of customer messages at once, for example, before Black Friday, um, you know, the star seller criteria wants you to reply within 24 hours. Not that star seller matters that much, but it is helpful for customers as well. Make sure to fill out your uh, seller message and you can nicely ask for a review if they liked the product. Same when you're messaging them, just politely uh, say that you'd appreciate a review and most people will. Another point is in your product description, you should include exactly what the product is, uh, when they'll expect to receive it and the expected delivery time. If you're selling a digital product, make sure to clearly state that it is a digital download and they won't be receiving um, a physical product because that's not obvious to some people apparently. And you can include some answers to frequently asked questions specific to the product as well. Um, and this can help reduce the amount of messages you get. Doesn't mean you won't get any because some people just don't read. Um, but at least you've got it written down there. Make sure you track your orders, obviously. Um, my fulfillment partner tracks for me, but if you're shipping manually, then you gotta enter the tracking number with whichever provider you've used. Don't forget to do that. Also, golden tip, with complicated addresses, something that helped me at the start was um, Google Maps searching the postcode beforehand, especially if it's from a foreign country. Like for example, once I was trying to ship something to Poland, I think, and the customer enters the address. But I have no idea which bit is actually the house name or the road or the province. And on top of that, they misspelt their own address, which obviously didn't help. But as long as the postcode is correct, when you search it on Google Maps, um, which bit is which actually becomes clear. And it also helps you see the full address. For example, if they missed out parts of the address, um, like here. So if they just entered that, you can see the full address. Now I've set it up so my fulfillment partner actually fills in the information for me, um, but sometimes I have to copy the order and cancel it to use discount codes. So um, it's just something I have to do all the time. And same if a customer says they haven't received their order, but the tracking shows that they should have. You can just quickly stalk them on Google Maps. And I mean, it is public information to be fair, and you might get some clues about what kind of area they live in. Like for example, if they live in an apartment complex or a university housing or something like that, then you can just message them and gently hint that 
they might want to check a mailbox or is there possibly someone that collected it for them you know um something like that but don't be too specific otherwise they might get a bit sus make sure to have a, a policy in place i say don't accept refunds and returns but if the request is reasonable um, then i will still refund and i'll talk more about that later so these things i've discussed all help protect you from disputes uh, now if you look at this page customers can actually open disputes if they aren't happy so you've got to have these policies clear and then you can be like okay i acted according to what i've written now keep in mind you need to respond to disputes or etsy will suspend you um, obviously worst case scenario best to communicate in a timely manner with the customer and then sort it out without corporate getting involved now on to the examples of common requests firstly customers might message you before they place an order um, asking when it will arrive will it arrive before a certain date like I'm trying to get this for my sister's birthday or so and so and uh, the best way to answer this I found is like don't lie give them an accurate estimate um, but say you'll try your best to get it shipped faster and if it doesn't arrive before then you'll give a refund I've done this a lot of times and personally of the people that ordered nobody asked for a refund so i think it's just better to get the order in the bag first and then worry about refunds later you might get custom requests like this as well um, for example i was designing a print on demand shirt here um, i just made some artwork for it i drew it on the, the ipad and the customer clearly liked the design so she wanted a digital download to print it on a specific item so what i did was i created a new digital product listing for her specifically and then i gave her the link um, as i said try to keep everything on etsy so don't be sending customers stuff via email or post without an actual transaction happening on the platform um, to save time or whatever because then the disputes are actually harder to handle if you don't have all the evidence on etsy so the second thing is after they order they might ask like when it will arrive and in this case just send them the tracking number again from the link even though they should get it from their email when they complete the order so some people might want to cancel the order like if they bought something accidentally um or if it's just going to come too late in that case you can just refund them bit annoying if that happens um if you've already shipped it and it's too late then you can just say return it to this address and i'll refund that's a perfectly reasonable request most people won't be bothered enough to return it um, from my experience but if they do then you need to refund them so next we're getting on to situations where they're not happy with the order so if it wasn't what they expected it wasn't the right size um, it got broken things like that this has happened to me a few times especially with coffee mugs that were breaking last year um doesn't happen much more uh, well anymore now thankfully um i did a video on this like my five star reviews video a while ago um and my stance was basically just refund immediately. But at the time I was a newer seller and I was kind of like scared to get bad reviews. Now I've built up more reviews. So my mind's sort of changed on this. Um, well, first of all, always apologize for the bad experience they claim to have had. Uh, then you can ask for evidence if they haven't sent any. So if they say something's broken or something doesn't fit, then ask for a picture. If it's broken, for example, then you can refund them and then you can tell them to buy another one with the money that you've refunded um, instead of actually sending them a new one because as i said like try to keep all transactions on etsy if it's the wrong size then in this case i just asked them to send it back and this person didn't bother to reply so uh, a lot of people just can't be asked to send it back or give evidence they leave you hanging and that's that you keep your money um, and that summarizes the extent of my experiences really so if things do get bad i mean i've never actually had any instances of just outright rudeness or very negative feedback um, mostly because well i've been on the platform for like a year and a bit but i do tend to respond quite fast and i try my best to sort out the problem um, i don't do custom orders as well uh, unless it's like something that they've messaged me about so I've had a read on the Etsy forums about customers actually threatening and manipulating sellers intentionally sometimes to like try and get stuff for free. If you think this is the case, then uh, try and not take things personally, obviously uh, report them to Etsy. You can do that here. I've got a link um, and respond professionally. Obviously, if it does get very serious, if they're like sending you death threats or something, I don't 
think that would happen hopefully not um but if it does get like bad then you can let Etsy deal with it. This should be a rare situation. Like most people just want their items delivered and that's it, right? But all the more reason to keep the evidence and the conversations on Etsy rather than dealing with things off the platform. So yeah, that about sums it up. Uh, from my experience as a print on demand and digital product seller, Etsy customers are generally reasonable people as long as you communicate and they don't tend to really cause issues. I mean, the reason they are buying from you is because they like your product, it's unique, and all they want most of the time is just to get what they bought. If you do get a negative review, it's not the end of the world, um, as long as most of your reviews are positive. Sometimes it does happen. If you think it's unfair, then you can uh, report the review actually and let Etsy handle the case. Obviously the tips that I've given aren't an exhaustive list. I'm sure I have a lot to learn about customer service and uh, maybe when I come across a larger variety of scenarios, I'll make an updated video on it, but that's all I have for now, okay? So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, whoever requested that, make sure to like and subscribe if you did. Socials and links down below, you know the drill, and I will see you in the next video.